In today's video, we are going to be talking about four ways to get off the blood sugar roller coaster. Now, before you click away thinking, what on earth is she talking about? Let me explain what the blood sugar roller coaster is. The blood sugar roller coaster is when someone's blood sugar is constantly going up and down throughout the day. When you look at the blood glucose of someone who this is happening to over 24 hours, it resembles a roller coaster. And being on this roller coaster is not ideal because it has both short-term and long-term consequences. Short-term, it can cause energy crashes, mood swings, cravings, and hanger. Long-term, it can lead to more serious health conditions, such as diabetes and heart disease. The more stable we can keep our blood sugar throughout the day, the better. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you four steps you can take to get off the roller coaster. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a certified health and nutrition coach. I post videos twice a week here on YouTube talking about all things insulin resistance, blood sugar management, weight loss, sleep, and more. So if you wanna take control of your metabolic health, make sure to click that subscribe button. And you can also find me on TikTok and Instagram where I share new posts every single day. Now, before we get into the steps you can take to get off the roller coaster, I quickly want to talk about what blood sugar is, why it matters, and also a little bit about glycemic variability. Blood sugar, also known as blood glucose, is the concentration of sugar in your blood. At any point in time, your body requires roughly four grams or one teaspoon of sugar to be circulating your blood. However, when we eat certain foods, they're broken down into glucose or sugar, and they enter our bloodstream, causing our blood sugar to rise. Now, your body always wants to maintain homeostasis and keep your blood sugar at that four grams we mentioned earlier. When blood sugar is too high, this can lead to problems, and the same goes for when it is too low. So again, right in the middle, around four grams, is the sweet spot. And your body will always work to keep it at this level. Glycemic variability refers to the changes in blood sugar that happen over a period of time. Someone with high glycemic variability will see a wide variance in their blood sugar levels throughout the day. There will be large swings in their blood sugar after eating, for example. And someone with low glycemic variability will have little variance in their blood sugar throughout the day. Their line will be more or less flat. And here's the thing. Our bodies are very resilient. They can handle large influxes in blood sugar when they happen. However, if you are having big spikes and crashes in your blood sugar numerous times throughout the day, day after day, this is when it can lead to issues. Doing this will cause your cells to become less sensitive to insulin, which is a hormone responsible for transporting glucose from your bloodstream to your cells. So when your cells start resisting insulin, they stop taking in glucose as they should. Your muscle cells are the first to become resistant to insulin, meaning that excess glucose is now more likely to be stored as fat. Not a side effect that a lot of people are thrilled about. And on top of that, insulin resistance will eventually lead to high fasting blood sugar and a type two diabetes diagnosis. And it can also manifest as other diseases as well, such as PCOS and heart disease. Having high glycemic variability is the same thing as being on the blood sugar roller coaster. But anyways, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get into the steps you can take to get off it. Number one, eat the right breakfast. What we eat first thing in the morning has an impact on our blood sugar for the entire day. If we start our day with a meal high in carbs, such as a bowl of cereal, this spikes our blood sugar significantly. We immediately hop on the roller coaster, and once we get on, it's hard to get off because when our blood sugar spikes, it's inevitably going to crash, which comes with cravings and hunger. So what ends up happening is we reach for a quick snack that spikes our blood sugar again, and then it crashes again. And we're stuck in this cycle all day long. Now, if we start our day with a meal high in protein and fat, our blood sugar isn't going to spike. It's going to be stable, and we aren't gonna be desperately hungry a few hours after eating and this will make it easier to make better food choices throughout the day. Number two, get proper sleep. When we don't get enough sleep or enough quality sleep, even for just one night, 
our body has trouble managing blood sugar the entire next day. How your body responds to food after a good night's sleep versus a poor night's sleep can be drastically different. Sleep is so important and so many of us take it for granted. One of my top tips for ensuring you get a good quality sleep is to manage your light exposure. You want to try to get as much natural light in during the day as you can, especially in the morning, and you want to limit your exposure at night because light and its absence is a key indicator for a circadian rhythm, especially stopping blue light after sunset because this tricks our body into thinking it's daytime and hormones such as melatonin, which promotes sleep, are suppressed. The easiest way to block blue light in the evening is with a pair of blue light blocking glasses. These are my favorite pair. They're from a company called Blue Box. I put these on after sunset and they block 100% of blue light. And this helps to ensure I get a good night's sleep. I will put the link to check them out in the description box down below. Number three, take a walk. When you eat a meal, specifically a meal that contains a lot of carbohydrates, your blood sugar is going to rise. Now, when we go for a walk after eating, this allows our bodies to use this energy straight away and the spike is less significant. And this doesn't have to be a long walk, even just a 10 minute one around the block is going to make a big difference. Another way to apply this strategy is to do any type of workout before or after you eat. Use your food to fuel the workout and the blood sugar spike is going to be a lot less significant. Number four, don't eat carbs alone. Carbohydrates are the macronutrient that spikes blood sugar the most. And the spike is even more significant when we eat carbs in isolation. So eating a banana on its own, for example, that is mainly carbohydrates and contains very little protein and fat results in a pretty big spike in blood sugar. But pairing foods like this with foods that are rich in protein and fat lowers the spike. And this can be as easy as having some Greek yogurt with the banana or even some nut butter. And those are four ways to get off the blood sugar roller coaster. Let me know down below if you already use any of these tips. Do you take into consideration your blood sugar when you're eating? Or is it something you've never thought about? Let me know down below. I love chatting with you guys in the comment section. If you did enjoy this video, remember to please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna check out those blue light blocking glasses that I mentioned earlier, those will be linked down below with a promo code. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video on factors that affect your metabolism that you might not realize. You can check that out here. If you wanna catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you wanna check out my brand new insulin resistance coaching program, you can find that here. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.